Welcome once again to The Breakfast. And now, as always, it's our tradition to share with you uh, something that happened today in history, sometimes in the 18th century, sometime maybe even a couple of years ago. Uh, so today we're going to 2006, the 30th of December. It was a day that one of the world's most popular leaders and, and presidents was hanged. His name Saddam Hussein, and of course, uh, this was the final day, you know, after a campaign uh, that started in 2003 when the U.S. invaded Iraq. He was uh, hanged on the first day of the Eid el Uda, and of course, uh, after a trial that lasted about three years. Judgment, of course, um, declaring him guilty of uh, crimes against humanity was given barely 30 days before he was eventually hanged. It was a shock, actually, across the world, uh, seeing that he wasn't going to get into 2007. You know, it was sh a shock for me, particularly, uh, that um, he was hanged so quickly. Um, but anyway, it's, um, of course, the fallout of a campaign against terrorism, fallout of a, a war that started and was based on lies, of uh, weapons of mass destruction. People have claimed that, of course, it was maybe a personal issue between Bush and Saddam, or a war against terrorism, or a ploy by the United States to grab oil and gold from Iraq, whichever reason it was. But um, after you know the war in Iraq, after the US invaded, he was eventually captured uh, sometime in 2003, uh, 13th of December 2003 to be precise. And of course, uh, a trial lasted he was found guilty of um, crimes against humanity for his um, you know, atrocities against the Kurds and, um, and in the Iraq-Iran war, and of course also his atrocities against the Shiites between 1996 and 1999, I believe. But it, it was, uh, there it was there is long. controversy around the reason why the U.S. went there in the past instance. Mm -hmm. They said there's a um, weapon weapons of, of mass destruction. Mass it was a lie. Destruction. It, till date, nobody has uh, it, it, it found. It was a lie. It, it, and it, it, it remains, was it remains um, um, a sore point for the people of that country. But let's quickly mention some of the reaction uh, to that story. The then president, uh, George Bush, uh, he was one of the first to react. And in his words, the kind of justice Hussein denied the victims of his brutal regime uh, was what was um, admitted out to him. But he said um, Hussein's execution will not end the violence in the country, as if he was predicting. Just hours afterwards, there was an explosion uh, that killed at least 30 people um, in Baghdad. Uh, scores were injured in that. Another blast uh, allegedly killed uh, 25 more, with over 60 people um, killed. However, there's a discerning voice to his execution. There are those who were not um, uh, very pleased uh, with it. And one of those is the head, the director of the New York-based Human Rights Watch International Justice Division. And that's uh, Richard Dickerson. Uh, Dicker, I beg your pardon. Uh, Richard Dicker. He said that history would judge Hussein's trial and his execution harshly. Um, however, there are those who found it uh, good. Iran hailed the hanging as a deserved punishment for a man it holds responsible for starting a devastating eight-year war against the Islamic Republic that left over a million people dead. Yes. That was what happened with uh, Saddam Hussein on the, this The day. controversial part for me would be the narrative and how easy it was to condemn uh, Saddam Hussein. Yes, you know, he has his atrocities, you know, but, uh, you know, people would also argue that it's about the same thing that the United States did in Iraq and, you know, in Afghanistan. Yeah, he was, that, he was, you know, he was convicted for of. about 140-something cases of mm -hmm. uh, deaths um, of people who rebelled against him and tried to uh, go on a coup. But deaths attributed to him is in the thousands. The, the, um, the U.S.-Iraq war that, of course, was supported by Britain and a couple of other countries, um, had about 30 million people across the world protest against it, but they still went ahead even when there were so many people that said, no, you can't just invade the country uh, claiming they have weapons of mass destruction. That led to more than a million Iraqi lives that, you know, that were killed. Quite unfortunate. Um, just bottom line is there is nothing good about war, to be honest. Yeah. Um, also on this day, uh, let's take, uh, mention quickly um, that the first color TV set went on sale on this day. Um, it cost, uh, and the reason I'm bringing it up now is that it cost about $1,000 in 1953. 
Um, that's uh, around $9,500 today. And if you convert it to the Naira, as we currently have, it's over 3 million Naira. Naira. Television. So it's a, a huge ton of money to spend to buy television. But that was what uh, happened on this day. The first color TV set uh, came um, on the market. As with radio in the first half of the century, uh, different companies developed different broadcast technology that's uh, for television. Um, all mutually incompatible. Uh, but they resolved all of this, and uh, the then National Television System Committee went on and gave them the go-ahead to get things done. On this day, December 30, in 1953, with the standard now finalized, the first TV was sold. It didn't become um, easy and accessible until mm -hmm. the 1960s. Uh, so, but at least that's uh, something we enjoy it now. Take it for granted. Exactly. I was just going to say, look how far we've come with you know development <laughs> have of, the, of the television. Now we have massive TVs, size. LCDs, smart TVs, <laughs> human size so much television of it. that you think somebody's in the room. Uh, it's amazing how far we've come. Today, also in uh, 2009, Nigeria, of course, uh, gave a um, decision to purchase 3D body scanners, and that was. Uh, really done because of the, um, they call him the underwear bomber, uh, Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalab, the Nigerian-born um, terrorist, uh, who, of course, has been sentenced to what, uh, how many life sentences? Four life sentences and 50 years for his attempted bombing of a plane that left, um, where now? It left uh, Lagos to Amsterdam, to, and then just yeah. when it was about landing in Detroit, he tried to detonate the plane with explosives that he had in his underwear. Such a shame. Um, he was unsuccessful, suffered first and second degree burns, eventually was taken to hospital because, well, he was in the U.S. If he was in Nigeria, he would have been slapped uh, to, you know, <laughs> a coma. But he was taken to hospital and eventually, after trial, was sentenced to four life uh, sentences and uh, 15 so years the, the, the intriguing part for me was the then um, Civil Aviation Authority um, Minister, Harold Demuren, uh, announced on this day that they will be buying a 3D a full body scanners um, at our airport. airport yes. Do we have that now? I, I tried to check yesterday, but all the persons I called that I know work with uh, aviation we have scanners, couldn't. Don't they? Uh, 3D how, 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 how advanced is, our is it? Is our, our, is our security improved since that um, attempt by the young man uh, who many uh, have given different names? I think it's not perfect, but it's 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 yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, you have to walk through a scanner before you get, you know, to the waiting area. You, you and of course, those scanners would always be able to point out the smallest things: a lighter, deodorants, whatever it is that you're putting on, and of course, things on your body. So um, it's not perfect once again, but I think we do reasonably well enough with regards airport security. Yes, once in a while we have stowaways. We have those people who it climb into plane engines and. <laughs> it depends. Well, I, just, flying, I don't want to bust your bubble. Flying from. But it depends on the airport you've gone to <laughs> in this from country. Flying the Nambia Zikwe uh, and the Muratala Bahamed. Uh, and, uh, 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 those are airports, international airports, yes. but have you well, gone to the airports. local ones? <laughs> anyway, we're trying. No, we'll get there. Now, small, small. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened on this day uh, in history. Um, and the, 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 this young man, I think he did this on Christmas Day, the 25th. Yes, um, that was when he committed, yes. uh, made an attempt to commit. It's unfortunate. He's just 34 years old, and he's going to spend the rest of his life uh, behind bars. So... Those we consequences. Won. I mean, it's, For it's, those that it's, are thinking it's, to be... It's either of both. He's either spending the rest of his life in jail or he could have killed more than 200 people along with himself, yes. you know, on a plane. So um, I'm not so sure which I'll pick, I'll rather pick, you know, the first option of him being in, in, in jail, you know, forever. All right, uh, yeah, just to wrap things up, let's uh, mention for sports lovers that two very prominent personalities, uh, that's um, LeBron James was born on this day in 1984 and we also have uh, Tiger Woods an American golfer on this day in 1975. I just felt I should mention it for all happy those birthday. who are huge fans of these people. Happy birthday to the two of them. Coming yes, up next indeed. we're moving straight into our conversations for this morning it's so much on our plate we will be talking about uh, the poverty learning poverty is that, that's yes, what it's called? Learning. Yes. Uh, uh, the, the first question is please explain what that really means yes. so we can understand. Please don't go away. <laughs> 